Now I'd like to tie for you a giant stone. The hook I have in the vise is a 3906B by Mustad. It is a size 6 and I have the barb crimp down. And we're going to start with lead wire and this is 15 thousandths lead wire. And we're going to start the put the lead wire start it right where the hook starts to bend. And bring that lead wire all the way up to the front. In the summertime you might may have noticed that uh, in the faster water or near the faster water on the dry rocks you'll see stonefly shucks and they're pretty big and I came up with this fly just to imitate those stoneflies in that faster water and it's been working pretty good for me okay, I get up to the front and then I'm gonna go back on it And this is going to be a very heavily weighted fly here. And I'm going to come back uh, just about halfway and then I'm going to go forward once more. And this is going to help give you that fatter, whiter profile on the front. And I dropped into a hole there. There we go. And you don't want to go all the way up to the front once again, but break it off so you have a little taper. And we're going to remove the piece from the back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cover that with thread to, to secure it. And the thread I'm using is 6 aught 70 denier, and it's black. And I'm going to start it at the front, and I'm going to move it to the back. and get rid of that excess come up to the front again we're going to do this a couple of times these stone flies they crawl out of the water to emerge and that's why you see them on the the shucks on the rocks but if you see the evidence of the shucks on the rocks, use this in that uh, water right there. And I've been, like I said, I've been having really good luck with it. Now I'm going to take a pair of flat pliers. These have no ridges inside. And I'm going to squash that front piece. And this is going to help give it that flat appearance you have to be careful not to squash it too much because you can break the lead okay now I'm going to take a piece of 4x tippet and I'm going to tie that in at the back and this is going to be the ribbing just 4x you could use 3x you could even use heavy monofilament if you'd like. But I think the uh, 4X is just the right diameter. Give it the proper ribbing. And I'm just going to leave that off the side. There. And now I'm going to take a piece of <clears throat> Swiss straw. And I reduced it. Here's what it... I started with this end piece here 
and I pulled it apart and it's just made of lots of layers of this uh, plastic so I pulled it apart till I got to the diameter that I wanted and to the uh, thickness that I wanted and what I did was I took a uh, black magic marker and I put a line on it and then I rubbed it off with a piece of foam here you could use your finger if you don't mind getting black on your fingers and this is going to be the the uh, top shell on the back section I'm just going to tie that in right at the back there and we're just going to let that hang and now for the tail I have two gray goose biot and I'm going to measure them and I want them to be half the length of the hook shank and I'm going to tie them in and make sure we bring them to the sides and you have to go up the shank with it just a little bit to hold them in place and now I'm going to take the other and I'm putting these on you see a natural curve on there and the one on the far side it has the curve going out and this one I'm going to put the curve going out I'm going to measure it up and tie it in place there we go I have to adjust this one just a bit there we go and now tie everything in and this will help from your thread stop your thread from going inside the lead wraps and if it twists around not a big deal you can see there and bring the thread back to the back and now I'm going to turn the vise slightly to help me dub and now for the dubbing I have red fox fur this is pretty close to the underbelly color of this stone fly. Now I'm going to dub my noodle. And you don't want it too thin, but you don't want it too thick at this point either. Just want to have like a medium sized noodle on there. And you can make it a little thicker as you go up taper your noodle and we're gonna dub that on I got to shorten my thread here and there we go and I think I bumped the camera there slightly And dub that noodle. Oh, need just a little bit more. And dub that body right up to the point where the lead gets a little thicker. Now we're going to take that piece of the Swiss straw, we're going to fold it over. And we're going to tie that down. And it's not quite dark enough. I'll take my black marker once again and put just a little bit more on there. And you can see 
how dark it became. Let me get there. Fold it back and tie that in. Then you can remove that excess. And save that piece for another fly. Now we take the monofilament and we're going to counter wrap it. Put one wrap underneath the tails first. And then begin the counter wrap. And tie that in. <clears throat> then I'm going to wrap up the body there just a little bit more. Fold the monofilament back. Remove that excess. And then bring the thread back to the last dubbing position. And now I'm going to take my second piece of the Swiss straw. And this is thicker. And you can see when you rub your finger on there, it kind of gives it that molted effect. And I only paint I only put marker on one side. So I'm going to put the dark section down. And I'm going to Tie that in right at that position. And I'm going to wrap the excess down on top. And bring that thread back to the abdomen once again. Now I'm going to take my dubbing twister. put it in place and there we have the dubbing loop bring the thread up to the head area and now I'm going to take the gray fox and I'm going to put it inside and this you're gonna use much more but you're going to lose some so you you're not going to be wasting and we're going to fill up that loop and we're going to twist it And now we have the, the dubbing brush. I'm going to pull it more or less to one side. And I'm going to begin dubbing. And you can see there's quite a bit coming off right from the right from the beginning. And I'm going to continue dubbing it. And then the loose stuff that's coming off, we're just going to take that off and put it back on our dubbing. And this is going to make the legs. Then we get up front. I'm going to tie that in. Then I'm going to remove the excess thread from my dubbing loop. Now I'm going to just pull some of the dubbing right off the fly itself. And I'm going to use that to dub my thread just a little bit more.
to finish it off and clear the area there we go let me back that up just a bit and now I'm going to take my piece of straw fold it over hold it pretty tight and tie it down and I'm going to take my straw once again I'm going to fold it back and continue tying the head remove that excess now I'm going to take my whip finisher and whip finish the head pull that tight remove the thread and put a bit of head cement on the head And now at this point, I'm going to flatten out the belly of the thorax. I'm going to pull some of that dubbing off the fly. And there we have the legs. Pull it flat, flatten it out like the stone flies are nice and flat you can take a drop of head cement and put it underneath there and this will uh, keep it flat and I'm going to squeeze it with the head cement on there this is going to keep it flat and keep those legs separated there and just give it a couple of seconds to dry and we, here we have a giant stone fly I hope that you learned something from this video hope that you would uh, subscribe to my channel please leave comments questions suggestions and most of all I thank you very much for watching my videos